Hey guys, it's Core Ross and Rainbow Six News. Today we're going to be looking at all the limited time events in Rainbow Six Siege that have shown up over the last six years, when the first one, of course, was Outbreak. Now let me just set the stage. This was back in 2018. This is before data mining, before any major leaks, and there was a rumbling that there was going to be some sort of zombie mode added into Rainbow Six Siege with Operation Chimera, which was the new season, in the first season of Year 3. Now I remember making my content about this and it was very interesting because Ubisoft didn't want to call it zombies, it was aliens. So the whole thing was supposed to be that the, there were aliens we were fighting, we weren't fighting zombies. It was kind of convoluted at the time but it was certainly interesting and this was an event that is basically like no other that we've ever got in Rainbow Six Siege since. Because of course it was a cooperative event and it was available for only four weeks and then it disappeared forever. Since then, the developers have said that there's just no way to bring it back because so much of Rainbow Six Siege has changed that they could not bring this back in. It's not like they could just copy paste it in and go ahead and play it again. It would need a whole overhaul. And I honestly, I've got no idea how long it took to make the original. There was three missions in total that you could play. You just randomly got chucked into any one when you matchmaked. But there was a lot to this event. And of course, because of its massive success, it did boost the player numbers by a huge amount. And I think brought in the co-op kind of players that previously Siege had never seen. And also, of course, when the event went away, those co-op players also left. So this was one of the biggest spikes in player increases in Siege's history back then. And although it kicked off the limited time events in Rainbow Six Siege, it was never to return. And it did spawn its own game, Rainbow Six Extraction, which oddly enough, Ubisoft advertised to the PvP players in Siege and never went after those co-op players that they got with Outbreak. Madhouse was the first Halloween themed event in Rainbow Six Siege and it was set on the house map, the original one, and featured the operators Ash, Thermite, Buck, Hibana, Finca, Pulse, Jaeger, Valkyrie, Mira and Vigil. And these all had very unique Halloween style skins that are actually some of the rarest in the game today. But as of this moment, Madhouse has never returned as an event. It wasn't though a particularly good event. Although people may have rose tinted glasses by now. Oh yeah, and Madhouse showed up in 2018 alongside Operation Grim Sky back in year three. And this event would be superseded by Doctor's Curse, one of the most repeated events in Rainbow Six Siege. It originally showed up in 2019 alongside Operation Ember Rise. It would then return in 2021, 2022 and 2023. Will it make a return in 2024? We will see. And although Doctor's Curse has got very repetitive, we can definitely say that it's one of the most unique ones that they've actually made to date. Conspiracy theorists are spreading wild rumors online, alleging that strange lights were spotted at the consulate. As you can see though, everything is just... Containment is a Rainbow Six Siege limited time event. There was essentially an in-game advert for Rainbow Six Extraction, which was also going to be launching shortly after this, if they didn't then delay the game after this event came out as this event first showed up in August of 2021 with the season North Star. The game Rainbow Six Extraction, which this event was made to advertise, would not launch until the next year. Now, although this was an in-game advert, I loved it. I was extremely impressed with it, and I kind of liked the idea of how maybe it could be better if it came back in a future version. Unfortunately, we did get a future version this year, and it's pretty much the same. I would have loved it if they could have made it three attackers against seven defenders with respawns, but much less health, so it would have been a much more hectic survival game than it currently is. And one thing I always do when it comes to limited time events, I do praise the ones that are not just a normal siege gameplay or team deathmatch. And this certainly was a little bit more of an interesting setup. Mute Protocol was a limited time event for Rainbow Six Siege, and this was one of the most unique ones that had ever come about. And this allowed players on defense to go into the camera system. So when they went on cameras, their actual player model would disappear and they would be in the cams and they could pop out of the cams and appear as a player model. And of course that meant they could jump around all over the place. And the attackers could morph from their drones into their player models and back. So it was absolutely sensational. If you got limited as well as a drone, you would respawn. And this originally showed up in 2020 alongside the season Operation Steel Wave. However, it was heavily exploited. And people were able to get themselves into walls, into ceilings and all kinds of stuff because of course you were a drone morphing into a player. So unfortunately this ruined the event. But when you were first playing it for the first time and you were playing it correctly, it was the most sensational experience I've had in Siege when it comes to a limited time event. 
And this event would return in 2022, but in name only. The actual event was just gun game. And unfortunately, all the cool characteristics of the previous event were gone. Maybe because the previous exploits just could not be fixed in Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow is Magic is a limited time event in Rainbow Six Siege, and this showed up originally in 2019 with Operation Burnt Horizon. Now back then there wasn't really so much leaks as there is today or data mining, so when the trailer went live for this, people thought it was an April Fool's, and when I posted my in-game screenshot showing the main menu, people thought it was also just me making an April Fool's. This was a legitimate event. And at the time, it was kind of a love-hate relationship with it because people hated the constant change of cosmetics going more and more towards the crazy and less realistic. However, as time has gone on, this has aged incredibly well. So much so that the majority now love Rainbow is Magic and are extremely sad when it doesn't show up for April Fools. Although, it makes sense that the April Fools now would be that the event doesn't show up. It's also changed quite a lot. It originally showed up in 2019, then 2021 and 2023. The original was Hostage Rescue and then it changed to Team Deathmatch where you were actually throwing teddy bears at each other. Rengoku was a limited time event in Rainbow Six Siege that first appeared in 2022 with the season Demon Veil vale, and it's one of the most stunning for visuals I think when it comes to the cosmetics. And although for me, I think the gameplay is relatively simple, it's just team deathmatch, it does add in an amazing amount of versatility with the throwing knives, which each have their own different effect and actually works quite well. It ended up returning in 2023 alongside Operation Dread Factor. The Road to SI was a Rainbow Six Siege limited time series of events that started in 2019 and would return in 2020, 2021 and 2022. Unfortunately, due to the narrative shift, it no longer makes sense for this kind of event to show up at the beginning of the year. And it's unfortunate. I'd actually love to see them do exactly the same thing, but just change the narrative. So instead of it being a stadium map, they would instead be on location taking on Demis's men or something like that. Instead, unfortunately, we don't have that. And this is a, a loss, I feel. Although the event was relatively simple, it was a new map which would combine bits of other maps together and the gameplay was just normal siege gameplay, but it did bring some uniqueness and although some of that uniqueness has now led into the actual game because one of the stadium maps is now playable in the playlists, it was generally quite simple. But the good thing about it was actually the cosmetics. I thought they were down to earth, a little bit more casual and a little bit different and overall I always enjoyed seeing them and seeing what they came up with. So it's a bit of a pity to have lost that at the beginning of the year now. Showdown was a Rainbow Six Siege limited time event and this would originally show up in 2019 with Operation Phantom Sight. And this was quite a simple 3v3 secure area but it was mostly team deathmatch and it was on a custom map called Fort Truth. And honestly it was absolutely excellent and I think this was brilliant. It did interestingly return in 2021 as an arcade event which used to be events that were kind of smaller than the limited time events and simpler and Showdown really did fit into that category quite well so it was also and actually one of the few ones where it was a full limited time event and also an arcade event as well. Snow Brawl was a limited time event in Rainbow Six Siege and personally, my most hated one, I did not like this one at all, but other people absolutely loved it. So it originally showed up in 2022 in the season High Calibre, and it also showed up again in 2023 alongside Operation Solar Raid. And I will give them props, the gameplay here was very different from normal, which I do normally like, and it was capture the flag, and of course, you threw snowballs, you had boosts you could pick up, it was very different. Grand Larceny was a limited time event in Rainbow Six Siege and this one was quite literally stolen from us by Ubisoft. This was an event that first launched in 2020 with Operation Void Edge and so far has not returned. And this was one of the most incredible events. It took one of Siege's basic prime things, destruction, and made it the entire center of this event and it was just exceptional. I'm so happy I got to play it at the time and I miss it now. And it is pure theft that Ubisoft has never brought this event back. Hopefully, fingers crossed they do, but I do wonder if it's one of those things where like Outbreak, things have just changed so much 
that they can't bring this back because otherwise I would have thought they've already done it by now because it was exceptional, it was unique and it was incredibly good. And just to give you an idea of what it was like, the map was Hereford, but all of the floors were entirely destructible, which meant you could shoot holes in the floors and drop safes down that you could then capture and stuff. And you could, of course, shoot holes and the players would also fall down. And you could also make it that players would fall down far enough through all the different floors to die on impact. And it was just exceptional. One of the best events and I miss it. I really, really miss it. Apocalypse was a Rainbow Six Siege limited time event, which showed up in 2021 in the season Crimson Heist. And although it played a little bit like normal Rainbow Six Siege, it did have a mode that was interesting because the defenders could actually move the main objective that the attackers were after. So it was a bit more dynamic and it was set on the Outback map pre-rework. Sugar Fright was a limited time event for Rainbow Six Siege. It originally showed up in 2020 alongside Operation Shadow Legacy. And amazingly, this event never returned, which I'm actually super surprised about because I was so sure it had. And although I'm not a big fan of Team Deathmatch, this is a good mod. It also had a unique map called Neighborhood, which was actually a recreation of a Rainbow Six Vegas map called Streets. They also absolutely packed this map with Easter eggs and interactions, which I do have a video going over all of them and its Muppet style cosmetics are still unsettling to this day. Money Heist was a Rainbow Six Siege limited time event and it was an advert for a Netflix show. So even though Rainbow Six Siege is absolutely packed with really weird limited time events like Outbreak, Rainbow is Magic, and even an event that had the operators dressed up as Muppets, this is by far the weirdest one for me as it seemed to be a very bad gameplay event that was just there to promote Netflix's show. Now I do wonder if this was the high ups in Ubisoft saying oh we could do some really good integrations and make all our events adverts for stuff and we could pull that in and like do maybe a Netflix show every season or something like that and I do wonder if the developers went okay we'll make an event for this and deliberately made it really terrible so that that would never happen because certainly Netflix never returned with any kind of integration with Siege and especially not to this level. And I just assume that they were trying at some point to think, how can we do a monetization with Netflix? And this was the first attempt and thankfully it probably did really bad and never continued. And it was just a hostage game mode on Bank. That was it. And there was only a couple of cosmetics for Hibana and Vigil on each team. And again, it would mostly just fill your play in the normal game of Siege. And this originally showed up in 2019 alongside Operation Ember Rise. Now I've been talking about Rainbow Six Siege's limited time events, but we're going to step out of that and talk about an arcade mode, which was called Legacy. Now arcade modes were seen as simpler, easier to make kind of gameplay that can be just chucked into the game real quickly and they hanged around for a little bit and you can have a little bit of fun with it. So not nearly as intricate as a full on limited time event, but Legacy was a little bit different. So I actually brought back old maps and old loadout configurations for operators. So it returned old Hereford base, old house to their previous states before they were reworked. And it also threw in their presidential play as well, which of course hasn't really changed too much over the years. It also returned the ACOG to Bandit and Jaeger. So although it was an arcade game mode, I actually do feel that this was much more of a full on event that just never managed to quite get there. And I do hope that they return to this in the future because it is to me one of the coolest things they've ever done and bringing back old maps is always good for those member berries. Especially old Hereford, I still to this day miss it big time. 